Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Kenny here and Marcus again today. Uh, we kicked out Tommy just because, uh, no, he's just too busy, just like always. But anyways, uh, no longer with this uh, Tommy uh, because he will be married soon. And so they told me, uh, Marcus, there's two places where a celebration is not for you. You know what those two places are? It is wedding. What's the other one? Yeah, that's very, very good. I think it's profound, right? Like a wedding and a funeral, just not for you. So there's a bunch of new folks uh, who might have been on this stream that are just like, oh, I don't know what these guys are talking about. But we are here indeed to talk about stocks. Uh, if you're new to this channel, Red Cliff Research is an independent research firm that deals a lot with quantitative analysis, a lot of data analytics. We have a strong data analytics background. And so we always try to decipher that signal from the noise and bring it to the retail trader, retail consumer, you all uh, and us. So yeah, welcome everybody. It looks like we got Bam and Mike in the house already. That is uh, amazing. We already got three likes. Uh, I do know that uh, <laughs> Mike has uh, bribed good old fashioned style his students into, uh, uh, well, maybe bribe is not the right word. He has uh, negotiated uh, negotiated a settlement <laughs> for likes for the Red Cliff brand. Hey, we got Bam on the line and Kia's here already too. Oh, well, look, what is this? Bam is talking about Elizabeth Warren. Did you see that Marcus today? Yeah, controversial. She was uh, she was throwing 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 flame at uh, at Jay Powell, uh, and uh, I don't know how you feel about Jay Powell, but uh, I feel like uh, you know I I mean I think I generally like the work that he does. He's a uh, you know when I look at him I'm like that guy looks like an adult. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like he knows what he's doing up there. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think generally, you know, um, the fact that the stock market has rallied off of a pandemic, and I get that all the stock markets have rallied, essentially, but uh, I think we're doing a lot better of a job than we, uh, you know, we could be doing. We don't know. Obviously, we still don't know what the hangover may or may not look like, but, you know, you get the point. Uh, all right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's, this is the AAII sentiment uh, indicator, which is measuring uh, retail inflows. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> we are printing some very bearish readings uh, this week. And so, you know, um, Marcus, did I pull up the wrong slideshow? This is, it says 9.15. I think I did. No. It's okay. No, it's, it's all right. It's all right. I think this is the right slideshow, but I didn't put the uh, this one. I just didn't overlay this one. Uh, what's my point? 21% uh, is actually statistically significant. It becomes a two sigma event. Uh, we're at 22.4%. We increased 29% is the newest reading. So I did pull up the newest reading. I did put it in here. Uh, but computers, uh, they work until they don't work. 29% is the newest reading. So a little bit more bullish. Uh, but today, that sell-off, huh? Yeah, yeah. No, that's... That's that's totally me. That's totally me. I was in a uh, funny story. I was in uh, the country of Georgia doing some work and uh, there was a master blaster from uh, the executive uh, CEO, if you will, of uh, he was actually a tech founder. And then he became a CEO of a nonprofit organization. You know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say who, but uh, the, the idea is, huh? You know, must not. No, no. And NGO, NGO. Uh, he was I. Uh, he had he had tricked his entire team into thinking that he was going to buy an Elvis statue, an Elvis art statue, uh, for like for just like sentiment value for the villagers or something like that. And it was just this extravagant art uh, art decor. Like El yeah, it's an Elvis statue. It looked ridiculously gross. Uh, but he he had me. Hey, can you help me Photoshop this thing in? And I was like, man, if I had the right tools, he's like, oh, you you know, he said the exact same thing that you said to me. Yeah, and I was like, no, no, I'll get it done. So we got it done. Anyways, long story short, his entire staff was messaging me on the side and be like, hey, we know you're there with him. Like, can you kind of talk him off that ledge and everything? And I'm showing him all these messages. <laughs> I was like, dude. Anyways, uh, all right, we're talking about Jamia too. Mike V, what's up, man? Mike uh, is talking about Jamia. Looked like it started to turn up before today. Uh, yeah, uh, Jamia. I think has found a decent floor. It's one of these things too, like today, if you look at the sell-off, the stocks that kind of are a little bit resilient are generally typically already sold to the point where there's just not much more selling uh, that it can absorb. So 
just significant there. You know, people who have bought have bought in. Anybody who's already wanted to sell has sold out of Jamia probably at this point is how you got to think about that. So here's an interesting thing that I want to start with. It's not our typical China news. Essentially, China is cracking down on companies, uh, foreign companies, uh, you know, that are doing uh, business in China. So I was just thinking, like, what is, like, the kind of ramifications for, like, what does that mean for, you know, other people? Like, you know, I'm, I'm assuming Apple is going to go into the, this category. Probably not because it's probably too big to fail and stuff. But there's all these other small kind of uh, miscellaneous companies. But uh, essentially, you know, if you read this highlights, it says, you know, as a foreign business, businesses watch a crackdown on domestic tech giants, the Chinese government has continued to promote opportunities for them in increasingly specific ways. Uh, that said, you know, if you go to this next kind of piece here, and I'll just kind of read this, the country's rapid growth into the world's second largest economy re relied heavily on foreign investments. However, it's been 20 years later, 30, if you will. Uh, overseas businesses have complained for years about being required to transfer proprietary technology into the country in order to operate there. Chinese authorities also prohibited foreign businesses from operating in sensitive industries or forced joint ventures with local players. Okay, that's that's kind of reasonable, right? Uh, but here's the thing. The Chinese government has removed uh, many of these restrictions in recent years, most notably in two places, finance and auto. And uh, auto big, bigly for me because I uh, got that big Neil stock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. I mean, they're just they're just stealing from one kind of growth story to to the next, and just kind of pointing to the other side, right? Uh, oh, okay. Kia's in the classroom too. Nice. You guys are all watching in class. Kia, you teaching? Or is he learning himself something? Uh, sound is in and out. Hmm. I don't know. We're going to keep talking. We're going to see how this is going. Anyways, uh, it might be my mic. I got different mic settings. I wonder, if, is it me or is it Marcus that's going in and out? It might be me. Hold on. I'll just speak really close to the mic. How's that sound? Can't hear him or me? Who is it me? We can't hear Marcus? Oh, no. Are we doing the I can't hear Marcus thing again? Oh, here we go again. Gosh, dang it, Marcus, you boomer. Thanks, Brandon. Brandon, thanks for the heads up. Uh, it looks like we can't hear Marcus once again. Uh, I'm in and out. You're not working at all. We're dying today. We're not. Uh, we'll figure this out, though. Did you hit the button, Marcus? Can you hear? Can we hear you now? Okay. Uh, Marcus, sit, give him a sound check real quick. We got time. All right, Marcus just talked. Did you all hear him? He said one, two, one, two. All right, we'll keep going until until we get resolution on that. If they say no, then you'll keep pressing buttons. Anyways, China cancel Marcus for sure. Uh, so uh, Jeremy here, Big J is what I like to call him. Uh, he says that the U.S. stock market is in a magnificent bubble, crazier than 1929 and 2000 incredible uh so oh boy here is the uh he's a big uh kind of fund manager co-founder chief investment strategist for uh grantham meyer uh oh, Dude, GMO think, or whatever do you think he's dressed like an adult no he's absolutely i've heard him on tv oh, he's okay. an adult he's for sure an adult uh so he makes very good salient like uh serious points about the stock market uh he's always been a little bit too early uh but he's generally been right um but i mean you know i mean i could i could call it right now too i'm i'm gotta be honest with you marcus i am pretty weary right now of the stock market of being long the equities market um i just think that might be a little bit of a pullback if you're trying to time the market uh if you're a market timer and you're ever um want to short the market like this is the time that you're going to get a lot of just broad market you don't even have to like 
you know, throw darts at stocks. You can just kind of peel, right? I think you do uh, do one thing. Uh, yeah, Matthew Thompson says uh, you're back. So you're back, okay. Marcus. Cool, you're, yeah. You know, trying to keep me down forever. Like, you know, they, they get in one or two good knocks, and then, and yeah. then I pop back up like that bad yeah. penny. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, what do you think? What do you think we are? Uh, you know, I think it's just different. I think with the advent of our – of cryptocurrency, of uh, meme stocks, things of that nature. I, I think it's different. I don't think it's a bubble. I think it's just the risk is getting offloaded onto other versions of stocks that we haven't had before. And um, I think that that's why you'll see a lot of growth in these more, um, I guess, stable stocks and and why things just keep going up. I, I, I think be, it's because so much money is getting funneled into uh some of these other riskier bets yeah maybe uh i'll tell you that you know again the one thing that uh and uh i want to say we talked about this in the red cliff research essentials but we haven't it's on day three which we haven't put out yet because we had the baby and nathaniel is saying congrats thank you nathaniel i uh, appreciate that we did have a new baby member if you if you're not uh following along here uh but uh yeah no the the thing is like one of the biggest things when it comes to the four indicators that i think are the most important straight out hands down is the generational cohorts uh, and, and kind of following the generational patterns, right? So, and one of the things that you really got to watch is like debt to income, high leverage years, the millennials are taking over and they're, uh, and in terms of like generational wealth being kind of redistributed and like folks dying, obviously, uh, and passing down their money, uh, they're getting it. And uh, the way that in which they spend money and the way in which they invest and the way in the which they believe the stock market should work is going to essentially go into their hands because they have the wealth or the majority and the bulk of the money. So uh, you got to play the game the way that most of the players are playing the game, right? Don't hate, don't hate the player, hate the game. So Yeah. Uh, also, uh, on the line, along the lines of the little kid, uh, we we're probably going to come out with some Red Cliff baby onesies. Um, let's see oh, if yeah. we can get some adult size onesies too. But um, <laughs> yeah, just putting that out there. Tight, tight. Oh man. All right. Well, I don't think we're going to get a full on crash anytime soon, but it, it may be a prolonged uh, kind of pullback. And honestly, if it ever was going to happen, you know. I got to say, Tom Lee's September rally call is uh, one day shy. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's got to peel pretty hard today. So I, I was pretty skeptical on it, too. Yeah. And I know he's really construct. He does a lot of good work and he's very constructive uh, on some of the things that. Uh, but the things that you needed to forecast. So this is kind of the thing. And, and this is not like a this is not a stab at Tom Lee. I think his, his work is awesome. I'm subscribed to his stuff, too. But my whole point is like. Um, some of the conditions and some of the fundamentals that needed to be kind of quantified or, or kind of examined uh, are kind of outside the scope of the things that he's really particularly good at. Uh, so, and so you have to wait for those things to kind of play out. And it's not necessary to be good at those things, but the people who are really good at those things right now are the people who are doing really well. And the funny thing is, I think right now, turn of the corner, volatility is back technicians like uh day traders swing traders scalpers are going to start having uh are starting to be making a fortune uh now pretty soon here uh and we see the likes going up uh slowly but surely so <laughs> mike has definitely uh, uh brought mini vietnam back to his classroom with the uh with, with the corruption in the in the politics <laughs> so yeah well but uh, i mean yeah. hon honestly man like it's got to correct there's no way it can maintain this uh, level of growth, um, but I don't see it turning downward, right? I, I don't see why it would need to turn downward. Um, like, it, it will balance out, but it won't mm -hmm. flatten out, if that makes sense. Yeah, most of the banks are, are calling for, uh, most of the analysts are calling for 460 S&P by a year's end. Uh, that's aggressive for me. Mm -hmm. we'll see i think we go flat from here man i think we stay 440 i don't know just... iphones the new iphone just came out that's mm. gonna pump things up yeah i mean if apple goes up then for sure one of the kind of remarks for oil like so everybody knows like oil and oah and xle are all going up today uh we made really good progress there but uh, uh the thing that i'd say is you know 
one of the one of the criticisms is even if money just floods in there, it's only three percent of the S and P, so you won't see it go up. Mm -hmm. So weighted wise, even if there's a ton of inflows in the market, it just won't show up because yep. it's an energy. So. Um, and also one one thing kind of tangential to the oil is shipping. Um, the shipping is hasn't slowed down at all. Uh, I mean, I think two days ago there was a featured article in Wall Street Journal that was talking about how backed up the port of LA is. Like there's just container ships sitting there because they're waiting for their turn to go in, unload, yeah. and take the the goods off of off of the boats. So um, that to me means that oil is going to continue going up because the price for shipping will stay up. Um, not just shipping, uh, you know, transatlantic big boats, but also last mile shipping, like getting that Amazon truck to your house, mm -hmm. FedEx, getting, mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff moved around. Um, yeah, it's it's not, this part is not slowing down and it won't slow down, especially as we approach the holiday season towards the end of the year. Yeah, it's quite interesting, actually. You know, you mentioned that, and this slide is exactly talking about that. So uh, this is kind of uh, back and forth between Tom Lee and CNBC, and it says oil is uh, hitting new highs is bullish for epicenter stocks, uh, so the stocks that were devastated the most from coronavirus. Uh, as a whole, since it uh, indicates the economy is continuing to recover. Uh, if you're wondering, though, even Kramer says oil could be a buy. It says, I still think you can buy them. So <laughs> if you like Kramer... Uh, He's, he's saying, uh, go ahead and buy oil, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is it? Uh, who's asking about Oh, Mike. Mike is asking about airlines. Um, I think the airlines are, are in a good spot now. Um, to I, I, I'm not buying it because I'm, I'm a big chicken when it comes to these sorts of things. But uh, I think the airline industry is well poised to recover at this point mostly because so many of the travel restrictions are starting to get lifted now so you're going to see people start to go back up in the air just for funsies you know go down to cabo go out to you know whatever vacation place um so it's going to start picking up again the demand's going to be there and uh the, the companies are going to profit because they've had to slash their um their operations so that way they could stay profitable even without the revenues so now the revenues start coming in again with uh lower operating margins they're going to see better profits uh maybe uh i think <laughs> <laughs> maybe but here's why you're wrong <laughs> you know you work with me too much when you know what's coming yeah maybe uh well the thing is okay so we're, here's what i think right okay so airlines uh i think that indeed what you said is true like that's that's but i think the bulk of their kind of top line is going to be business travelers that's fundamentally changed for sure. Second piece to that is, um, especially first class and all that, like, yeah, I'm the guy who upgrades to first class only when it's cheap enough to do it, right? But like, there's dudes that, you know, and if those guys aren't flying, um, okay, but the here's my point to that. Um, the stock price, I think, has indeed already done that, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So right now, if everything doesn't happen according to plan, I think you're probably, I don't know. I'm not I'm not fully on board with airlines. Uh, you have to pick your onesies, twosies, the ones that are kind of like uh, not very, very like not your American Airlines, not your Deltas, like look deeper, uh, you know, like Alaska. I haven't looked too much into them. I've only looked in Alaska and that was the one that like kind of stuck, stood out to me. Uh, and I think Funstrad did a pretty good um, write up on them as well. So I'd suggest checking out uh, JetBlue if you're interested in airlines. Just do some mm -hmm. research on JetBlue. That's mm -hmm. a that's a good one. Yeah, so what you want to look at is you want to look at the legs, right? Like figure out the legs um, and then kind of figure out from there like what you see. And especially if you're thinking holidays, Mike, find the airlines that are like poised to, to have the most connecting hubs and stuff in those airlines. So this 10-year treasury, it's going, uh, it's doing the up thing like by a lot, um, which <laughs> suggests interest rates, right? So I don't know. The, the, the idea here is, you know, tech stocks should always sell off when this thing goes up and uh, – more so because of the speed or the whipsaw nature of the up move, right? Like if it kind of just, you know, does, I don't know where my pen is, Marcus. Okay, it's up here. Uh, if it kind of like does this or, and like, it should be fine generally, right? Wow, that's a really nice looking chart. Yeah, but the problem is like, it just did this. So <laughs> people got scared, right? So, but yeah, it's kind of like the thought. Um, 
and here's just kind of a good kind of summarization of like what it really means uh this guy uh he just went into everything he is like with the run-up in energy prices and all the commotion about shipping problems like this literally everything and the persistent and long-term inflation expectations uh and also the persistent fed is marching towards a plan to taper and eventually tighten the clock starts ticking right once the tapering begins and and i do indeed think that that might be happening so i don't know what are your thoughts on this do you think the interest rates are going to keep going up from here um no not necessarily i i think uh because of the way that um specifically energy is running right now i i think that it's gonna honestly because the energy price ends up kind of fueling what everyone else or what the rest of the economy does because they need to move their goods and they need the energy to produce the goods um i, I think you can just kind of follow the energy prices uh to see how things are going to go and right now um it's going up <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah uh i think goldman is at, calling for two percent by year's end I, I could be wrong and we're at what 1.54 right now for the 10 year um yeah. so yeah uh michael v is saying uh what's up with ar and vr we do have ar and vr plays um you know what i think we're going to talk about some this week and talking to colby about a bunch of them so yeah, let's uh, let's wait for that. But I will say that uh, did you see the um, uh, those glasses with the um, thing, Marcus? Remember you we were talking about that the Facebook glasses with Ray Ban? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's in Facebook over here. Mike V's already in Facebook. Mm, okay. Me. But uh, yeah, there's definitely a bunch of plays I, out there. I, I, I support. Yeah, I support all the AR VR plays. I still think yeah. they're early. They have to solve a lot of stuff. One of the things that you know they have to solve is the motion sickness thing mm -hmm. like until everybody can uh, can do it and once yeah. they solve stuff like that it's game yeah. on see you later yeah uh, the, so. that there there's two aspects of vr in particular that i know with my headset i i, I have an issue with one is the the motion sickness piece like i can't just sit there and play games for hours i i need to take a break like it's just too mm -hmm. much uh but the second thing is like the investment if that makes any sense like when I play it on the PlayStation, I just turn it on and I sit on my couch with my controller. Yeah, um, well, you gotta whereas, do things. And... Yeah, exactly. With the VR, mm -hmm. you gotta actually like be totally immersed, and that's great because yeah. that's what you're there for. But um, if if they can do kind of a light version of that to make it more VR uh, light, yeah, well, more just like show up, go casual, your VR, more, more casual yeah, yeah. friendly, you know, yeah, yeah. like that's yeah. that's where they're gonna really hit their stride. But as for AR, um, I think that's really exciting because you don't like you can just have your phone and like. You know, on Amazon now, you can take a, a piece of furniture and put it in your room yeah. and look, see what it actually looks like and things of that nature. I, I think AR is a really, really good play. Yeah, so for augmented, re uh, for augmented reality slash virtual reality, two things that I look at the most is, like, the bigger companies are going to do better. Like, Microsoft is already doing stuff like that. Apple, Here's the second piece, yeah. though. Uh, materials companies, folks that can miniaturize and uh, – <laughs> I'm going to use a word that doesn't exist – nano size. Uh, <laughs> Uh, nano size things, right? So like uh, materials. Hey, trademark uh, on that. Yeah, exactly. Materials manufacturers that can make materials smaller, lighter, um, kind of meta materials folks, things, people who deal in that. Those are going to be just uh, great companies to invest in. So I've been looking at those. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the question, Mike. That's uh, that's good. I'm totally supportive. I'm, I'm, I think you're early, though, just so you know. I think we're like five, ten years away before we start printing uh, money. But that's good. Mm -hmm. Just kind of hold what you got. Yeah. what you got and uh and richard brought up another good one the google maps like when you're when you're using the google maps the street view portion you can it'll show you like where to go mm -hmm. so yeah it's pretty cool uh, all right this is the asan chart boys i finally did it finally did it <laughs> marcus I finally did it coming back down <laughs> ah, dang it <laughs> unfortunately uh i sent the i did not send the signal in the stock signal risk on chat that's the account that i took it in i didn't send it in the in that signals chat because we were trying a new platform the iris platform or whatever the social media sharing thing and so it went through uh, i know it went through because mike showed me the screenshot that it made it and we made 118 percent in four days so that's pretty good uh, i would say uh but yeah thank you very much thank you thanks <laughs> bye <laughs> uh so here's an interesting one marcus uh, Alibaba is going to stop selling crypto mining machines. And really? You guessed it. It's because China has <laughs> made mm. 
cryptocurrency is illegal, mm. which is like, so look, Alibaba, China's largest online retailer, will stop selling cryptocurrency miners and machines, according to an announcement published on Monday. So I did follow this earlier. I was going to say something, but uh, I was waiting for it to be official. But this comes after the Chinese government made its own sweeping announcements, banning all crypto on Friday. That's sad. Let me show you something. Um, Mike, Mike wall, Verlinden right? is asking about Weemi. Uh, I don't even, I don't even know how to say it, but, uh, yeah, I, the, I don't, the hologram guys, they're, they're pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I haven't followed them hard enough to know too much about them. So I'm, I'm bringing up uh, coin market cap here. Uh, they, they've got, and I, they've got these cool glasses that are like half VR and half normal. And so like mm -hmm. AR, but it's like different. I don't, I don't really know. So Neo, if you didn't know, and it's 51 now, coin market cap, but in 2017, it was like number 5, 10 to 10 or something, but market cap wise, pretty small, uh, pretty small, meaning 2 billion, 2.5 billion. Uh, that said, uh, this is a Chinese cryptocurrency, by the way, and it's still a little bit resilient. You know what it is. These guys are just like, yeah, go ahead. What are you going to do? You're going to try to ban us? Like, that's literally the whole point of yeah. cryptocurrency. Right? Yeah. Like and you know what, man? Honestly, if they stick yeah. it out and they make it yeah. through, like, whatever whatever the Chinese government throws at them, it's going to be proof of concept for the whole cryptocurrency yeah. market. And I think that'll be huge. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I'm holding, like, 4,000 of these jokers. So, come at me, China. Like, I <laughs> I bought it way back. So, I mean, it's not like, I don't know. I should sell here off the fear, but I just, I think the crypto markets, I just don't play the free, you cannot, okay, you shouldn't play the crypto markets like that. Because if you would have sold everything in, uh, when they started crashing, you would be kicking yourself right now. You know what I mean? In 2017, when it went all the way back down to 3K or whatever, yeah. like you would just be like, I don't know getting ready to commit suicide or right because like this is this is pretty bad right but like 36 dollars 89 cents i mean that beats like it was down to like seven or six or seven bucks or something for for a while back in 2017 so i'm pretty happy with the price that it just hasn't tanked yet but i mean anyways just a thought well, uh I yeah mean, who for, knows, for some perspective shiba is is beating them so so they're offering so Shiba. That. At <laughs> yeah, well, you know what, Marcus? You know, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. But yeah, uh, I mean, that's fair. I was like, Chinese, where, where is uh, where is ICX? Is it even on here anymore? Man, that was a coin. I had so much. I still have a lot of shares of it, but it was worth a Which lot more. I don't even see it. It's the Korean right crypto, crypto yeah. player icon. Yep. icon. Yep. And it's worth $1.46. Oh, wow. Nice, man. Time to sell. <laughs> Not selling. Yeah. No, you just got to stick around <laughs> long enough for, for you to become a hero or a villain, man. Yeah, so yeah, you come yeah. villain, go to zero, or you become a hero, man. Watch just everyone everyone that. else is going to get yeah. outlawed for one reason or another, and uh, yeah. that's the only one that's going to be left because yeah. nobody knows about it. And you'll be Dude, I, I, would, I went all in on this icon. <laughs> I read the white paper. I fi tried to figure out, like, the architecture. I went to... Uh, they were like they had it all set up and there was there was use cases it was like i was like oh man okay they're the, if, if like the entire korean ecosystem uh is founded around icon then i'm gonna be rich wait but right it's, now I'm, it's korean I'm just a thousand there i'm just yes yeah, korean oh i'm just a thousand air yeah i'm just a thousand air right oh, now yeah. <laughs> dude they're opening but, a, a korean fried chicken place uh by my house i'm very excited i don't how's that gonna work what's uh is it gonna have like a lot of pepper sauce and uh what do, I don't what know. Do you I've never you? had it. I'm just really excited. I saw the sign and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so fried good. Fried though? Like, I'm trying to think fried yeah. chicken with the Korean fried Koreans. chicken. I'm trying to think of what that looks like. Uh, Pretty. What's it? There, a, there's a name I, for it. Um, and mm. when I told one of my friends who's uh, actually from Korea, um, she was like, that's, that's like the KFC or the Popeyes of Korean fried chicken. I was like, that's exactly what I want. Like, why are you saying it's a bad thing? It's called Banchan. Wow, yeah, this is not a bad thing. Banchan. Oh, okay. That's what it's called. Banchan. Okay. Oh, Bem says, ask him anything about Korean. Oh. Bem, okay. what's Banchan? Is it good? Is Banchan is good? good, Bem? Be, be honest. Be, be brutally honest. Sweet One's sweet. opening up by my house, and I'm very excited. <laughs> you are, are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Uh, all right, so this is the Baba chart, and I'm looking bringing this good. up because <laughs> looking real good, boys. 
the 150 to, 155 was uh we thought was the floor we got in over here get ready we got uh, it like over here we yeah. thought we we had bottomed out but uh yeah, you, you know hey in all fairness we called it uh we called way back in the day we called it before everybody else when it was it was screaming and soaring at 280 we're like mm -hmm. nah maybe a, a little bit lower uh and we waited so even if it goes down from here i mean you can't you can't get it perfect but i mean like i think generally we're still fine what do i think uh if it cannot hold here this is a very critical line so if it doesn't hold here marcus we're mm -hmm. going to 129 in which we have to add to our positions oh yeah uh and if and if anybody has been kind of following us on how we played oil and all that other stuff you know there's two ways to do it you can cut sling load like we did with ford uh, yeah. and try to get out early enough to, to have something left uh, and no, that's only and the only reason we did that is because we didn't have raw equity like we were leveraged and we had theta working against us we we're burning time uh but with alibaba uh we're gonna have to add here 130. dude like we, i can't we're gonna wait. have to add. i can't wait for it to hit 129 because it's going to. yeah and so then you, we're gonna so load that's the gonna be your first buy <laughs> load the boat. <laughs> this is a load the boat moment right here oh uh, uh quick store ng says nice I think I, I don't know if that was about Alibaba or the fried chicken, but either way, it's I, probably I the agree. sweet and spicy. Yeah, I was pretty sure it's the sweet chicken. <laughs> yeah, and Ben says uh, I'll like it, so I'm definitely trying yeah. it. Like, there's no way. You know what, it. man? Now yeah. revisiting. Oh, I don't have it up there. That was a slide. Well, I'm starting to think that, uh, you know, where's my where's my coin market cap slide here? I don't know. I can't find it. Uh, I'm starting to think I might. You know what? Nobody's thinking about it right now. I think the Korean emerging market. I think we need to buy some more Icon or oh. ICX. Buy, okay. Just wait, buy a thousand dollars. Wait, do you own on. Icon? Like, are you yeah, are you the creator? Is that why you want no, everyone to buy it? I'm not the creator. <laughs> I own a lot of it though. Yeah. I mean, I not 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 relatively speaking. I I owned a lot of it, and then it was worth a lot, and I should have sold. But I'm just still holding. I'm holding bags right now for sure. Okay. Like, cool. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm. I'm kind of down. I'm kind of down. Mm -hmm. Not like. You know, like, like a, what's how much are new cars nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> Too much, man. I tell you what, yeah. uh, the used car market in uh, particular, used cars, forget about it. Just, just hold on to your banger for now. Oh, okay, okay. Well, the the cool thing was, I think I bought about seven thousand dollars worth, and I think it went up to about nineteen, and then I was like, hmm, should I sell some? I was like, nah. It went up to twenty nine thousand, and then right now it, it's only like two thousand dollars worth. <laughs> <laughs> not much uh netflix is investing 700 million on what k dramas oh Ooh, yeah for sure interesting my daughter my daughters have watched every k everything on, mm -hmm. on netflix it's like if it's on there i know about it uh here's the bitcoin chart just bringing this up because you know we were calling this toppy here marcus remember yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like for weeks we we're like this looks toppy yeah i don't believe yeah. it yep and look what happened Bam. This is like this is palm reading yeah. mastery right here. Pretty just so good. you know, it's pretty good. Uh, I think we're gonna keep going down. <laughs> like I'm, it's yeah. fine. Like I have cryptocurrency, so don't be like, oh, this guy's such a bear. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I own shit, but uh, I think it's gonna go down, man. Dude, it's, it's gonna okay, hit though. 35k and slide a little more and then pop back up. I think there's a new floor. You think there's a new floor? Sounds like you do, and you're not even a bull. You're like the most bearish dude I know in Bitcoin. Yeah. No, I, I I think it bottoms out just under thirty five k and then bounces. Okay, okay. All right. Tesla. Why did I bring up Tesla? I think uh, it was a story behind Tesla. But mm -hmm. uh, just looking at this chart, right? Just looking at this chart, we uh, we got constructive on Tesla right here after AI Day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and we did have a nice little run here. Yeah. Excuse me. But we said that uh, seven seventy five is a very very critical line but we've crossed 775 and we rejected down and now we're popped back over excuse me 775.32 is where we at this is really important so tomorrow it looks like it held but if tomorrow we sell off oh man it's time to short <laughs> <laughs> but if tomorrow we go to the upside boy we, we are going for a ride i think it's time people are very very constructive on uh, tesla right now you got any thoughts on this, Marcus? Um, we got 40 likes, by the way. Oh, what? We have 40 likes? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah, well, you know, uh, 
with the new $11 billion investment that Ford just announced, um, I, I think you're going to see some of the other more traditional car makers make similar announcements. Um, and with that comes um, kind of long-term plays for the auto industry and that, that will be uh, basically the, the, the market will really like these plays. Um, <clears throat> mostly because the the new factories are going to be set up without unions, and so that's going to allow a lot more uh, leeway for the auto companies. Wall Street's going to love it, and so I think the money is going to go from Tesla into the GMs, the Fords, the Toyotas, Honda, that that sort of thing. Um, and I, I I see it correcting back to where uh, probably where it should be, right around six hundred, I think. Uh, and then okay. we'll stay there for a little bit. Okay. Uh, that is totally fair. I can see it doing that for sure. What do I think is going to happen? I have no idea. I'm agnostic at this point. When I got constructive, I was right here. So, I mean, I mean it's look, already, look, look it's already volume. like, what's that? Look at the volume right now. It's, it's yeah. very, very low and it hasn't, it's, it's stayed the same. Like until there's a spike or a massive mm -hmm. dip in volume, um, I, I I, I don't see Tesla uh, popping back up again, uh, yeah, it's back up hard, to the 800s. Hard. Yeah, it's, hard. it's going to be hard to be uh, excited about anything Tesla does. I mean, if you're not excited by the AI robot, it's hard. And then there's there's so many. It's like it's either you're already a fan or you're not a fan. Like you've yeah. never heard of Tesla, then you're not converting anybody new except for yeah, any people like yeah. me who are like our eternal bulls, bears, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, it's, also a lot of a lot of the Tesla uh, stock price is going to be contingent on how they delivered, like numbers-wise. Uh, now that we're t getting into the uh, fourth quarter, we're, we're going to start seeing mm -hmm. production-wise what numbers did they hit. And if they were mm -hmm. off by a lot like they have been in the past, you can almost guarantee the numbers or the stock price is going to fall. Um, but... I mean, really, that that's that's what it's going to boil down to is is yeah their their numbers plus the, what the rest of the industry is doing. So interesting. Yeah, no, I think that's right. Um, but anyways, yeah, just something to watch. Uh, so the reason I yeah again the reason I bring that up is just come on, man, this is like the spot. Uh, like this was a gap fill, and so if we if we're moving here, we should have. Like all the supply is absorbed. My whole point is like right now, um, even before it hit six hundred, like you were saying. It could definitely gap up uh, over here. Like this is a gap up moment. Like mm -hmm. it's only been here for a short amount of time. Meaning, like technically, uh, there's no supply to absorb here. You can gap up all the way to 880. So yeah, yeah, and and it might jump once the numbers are released. But again, mm -hmm. I really, I genuinely yeah. think it's correcting back to right around 600. Kathy calls for Tesla 3000. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna say it. Yeah. You guys are try. You guys, these guys always try to trap me on the Kathy trap. They know what I'm gonna say about. Like, you know, like, 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 if if you catch me in your hometown and we go out for a drink, let, let me let's talk about Kathy, but not on the live stream. Cause, you know, that's that's uh, what's that? What that word? It's just like it's not gentleman like. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah, she's all right. It's she's uncouth. Right. She's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, what are you a roop? <laughs> Uh, okay, so here's uh, Wall Street bet stock mentions. Again, this is like the most simplistic way that you can do it, but it actually has been working. Uh, the reason I mentioned this, and I should have put this first, is this Tesla's had 209 mentions recently. Uh, so this is the top thing. And obviously these things cycle through, but I mean, you have Alibaba up there as well. GME, uh, kind of in the middle. Uh, and then uh, here's here's an interesting one, Go EV, 67. Uh, we talked about it in the last live stream. Last live stream, it was up here at like 300 or something like that. Go EV was. Uh, and I think I have a chart. Yeah. So it actually went up after we talked about it, up 36%. And then it went down 17%. So, so it added what? 19? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing math in public, sure. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to do it. I'm not going to correct you if you're wrong. <laughs> Big point. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I did that one time. I was down. I was like off by one number. And yeah. Was like, well, yeah. Then, no. then no one takes you seriously. After. Yeah. Nobody takes you seriously. Yeah. So I'm yeah, not this doing fucking that. guy. You can't even do math. Actually, it's definitely 19. <laughs> uh, it's definitely 19 though. But anyways, here's the point. Um, what is my point? Oh, uh, if you're late, if you watch this signal, like if you go here and you get like, oh, you get the mentions, like uh, go EV, right? It was all the way up here. Like the top mentioning one, there's certain specific things. So things that don't get moved, market cap, like Tesla, AMD mm. is kind of generally on there and stuff, but they don't really get punched out until they like 
hit like up here status, right? Number two. But when these little like micro names get that kind of traction, and honestly, I don't have time to go in the threads and read them or anything. This is just like, you know, uh, our bot scraping it. But like mm -hmm. when it gets to like these levels right here, um, do we have Tommy's got the whole? Are we? No, we're not. Are we need to start publishing this for uh, for uh, the folks in the uh, our Patreons. Hmm. Uh, we'll start publishing it so they yeah. can just like look it up every day. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, if for Go EV and all these little small companies, remember we were looking at a bunch of other ones. It's like you can just flip short. Like you can just like as you see the spike, flip yeah. short, and you're gonna get this seventeen yeah. percent. Like this Dude. is seventeen point one three percent. It's like. Yeah. It's like on cue every time. Uh, M as MVST was another one that we did. Like we we're like, oh, it's gonna it's gonna shorten, and it, mm -hmm. it totally did. Um, so uh, Richard is asking how we got uh, so many likes with only twenty one people watching. Um, it's it's from the uh, our I don't know what to call them non standard participants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, non standard <laughs> the forced fun watchers. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the the kind. Uh, the kind students from the various yeah. classrooms who are being made to watch this. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> uh, so Mike is trying to turn Long Beach into mini Vietnam. Like yeah. to try, to try to put the communist spin on it, on his. Uh... <laughs> hey, I tell you what, if 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 uh, if there's foe involved, uh, he might yeah. he might yeah. be onto something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get some of that good pho. I, there's no good pho in Germany, by the way. Oh, Just really? So you know. In Germany, they it's don't have good normal. Vietnamese food? Yeah. That's shocking. Can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> shocking. I've been to everywhere, too. I've tried. I've tried. Yeah. France, obviously. Like, you can get, of course, you can get good anything in France, which is True. crazy. Hey, go back one side. There's uh, the the one side that I find interesting is the one that's just below there. Uh, the Go EV is our rider. The fact that they're talking about rider so much, I think that's crazy because it's a car rental company. Like, how much movement do you expect on that? But then when you look into it, um, it's like they're in the midst of a lawsuit and they've got some, you know, some very bearish uh, things going on within the company. And so if you are interested in playing this, uh, it's actually mm. it's actually uh, ripe for for picking up the downside. And right? then, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then uh, selling yeah. off once they pick it back yeah. up. Just wait. Just wait for the pump. Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, exactly. <laughs> Palantir, uh, dude, I am so so ready for volunteer uh, yeah. to crash. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so Ford partners uh, partnered to spend $11.4 billion on four new plants in Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, in order to support EVs. Uh, you hear, heard anything about this, uh, Marcus? Yeah. Um, this is uh, obviously big news for the company and for the industry as a whole. Uh, the biggest thing that uh, that that or the biggest reason why this is wave making waves is because a the dollar amount like that's huge. I, I don't think there's been as big of a dollar amount from Ford uh, put into any plants that uh, it's put together. But um, it's it's non unionized workers, and so that is an absolute 180 from how business is usually done within uh, American auto industry, and and you can see that. Uh, they're taking cues from the the uh, the international automakers like the Volkswagens, Mercedes-Benz, um, uh, Nissan, uh, the, the the folks who have plants here in the states. Uh, mm -hmm. None of them are unionized. Tesla is not unionized, and so um, that gives the company greater flexibility with respect to its workforce. It also means that the workers aren't going to be as protected as they are in a union. But um, the pay uh, in and of itself will almost certainly be better on the surface. Like there, you get benefits within the union and you get all kinds of, mm -hmm. um, you know, incentives to be a part of the union. But what this does is it breaks tradition for the Blue Oval and um, it, it breaks new ground for the American auto industry, quite frankly. Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> really, really interesting. Um Thanks for that. Uh, yeah, so this is obviously a mock-up, but it like I saw the field on Google Maps. It's massive. Like yeah. they're really mm -hmm. going in for sure, and like yeah. clean energy and all that. And so. and it's I mean it's jobs. It's keeping jobs here in the states, which is fantastic. You know, it's it's good uh, manufacturing jobs and skilled labor. I mean, this is exactly the sort of work that uh, gets outsourced a lot. And the fact that we're able to keep it in within the the country and 
um, and not shortchange folks is, is huge. So. so Tennessee and Kentucky are those two states that everybody kind of uh, – there are some weird states that I'll say that people are very dismissive of. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and these yeah. are like two of the ones that like if you go there and actually kind of spend a, a, a moment uh, on the ground there, you're like, wow. It's not even, it's not, it's not bad. Dude, Tennessee so. rocks. Okay. I, I lived there for about uh, three years and um, it's fantastic. I lived just outside Nashville. And anyway, um, the reason. Wait, were you screaming chicken? What? Is that why? <laughs> were you just screaming chicken? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? No. Um, so, you know, to, to your question about the Southern states and uh, not, you know, getting short shrift a lot of the time, um, it's because they don't, they haven't traditionally had a manufacturing presence. Like mm. they were traditionally agricultural states. Um, mm. and now, now that actual manufacturing is coming, uh, and has been there from, you know, foreign countries that basically the, the lawmakers within a lot of the Southern states have incentivized, uh, foreign countries to come in and build their manufacturing capabilities. Uh, and now we, mm-hmm. uh, as Americans, are starting to um, make or take advantage of those same tax breaks and incentives. So um, I, I think this is a shift in, in how in how American companies do business. So wait, uh, what does that mean for Michigan? Does that mean that Redcliffe Research still has a chance in buying server space in Michigan? Is that what that means? What what it means is, yeah, uh, real estate is about to get even cheaper here in in, in the mitten. <laughs> Because quite frankly, what this does is this takes the future of automaking away from uh, Motown. You know, so oh. many plant uh, plants and uh, like th- there's a reason why M- Michigan is the home of the big three of Ford, GM, and well, Stellantis slash Chrysler. Yeah, um, damn. Th- th- that's where the cars this is are the made. first move. Yeah, yeah, and, no, and this now, is the now first move for sure. Now they're moving. Yep. Huh, interesting. Um, okay, well, <clears throat> look, I'll, I'm willing to start an esports league up there. So okay, yeah, let man. me know when we're ready. <laughs> we cool. got the space. <laughs> Can we sponsor a team? Let me know when. Like, let me know. Give me a cost breakdown of when when it's going to be okay for us to sponsor an esports team. Like when when that. Looks okay. Like. Give me a give me a roadmap. Right um, now. Yeah, Just no later than uh, you know. No, no, don't. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, I sure do it live. <laughs> See, you're not taking me seriously. Yeah. I'm like serious. So no, I don't want you to do it live. I want you to put some brain power against this. You know, like, so. dude. Rizwan says he sold Ford today and got six thousand in profits. Mm. That's great. Congrats. Beautiful. 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 Uh, Colby is saying, "Let's do it." Uh, I want to sponsor an esport. Uh, so hey. By the way, Colby is gonna. We're gonna do a video this week. Uh, check it out, uh, Margus. Write it down. Mm-hmm. Make a world map. Don't spend too much time on it because you have real work to do. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> give me, uh, give me the three-year plan, man. What we, how much we need to make to sponsor it? So okay, you got it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Well, wait. Shakanal says, "What's up with OIH? Does Lee and Kramer know what they're talking about? Palm reading end of year. Yeah, palm reading. Uh, I do think that. Uh, well, first of all, Kramer is just uh reluctantly with his arm behind his back uh based on the price action saying that it's going to do a certain thing honestly um i see it depends on what happens with the coronavirus and if if the uh, pent-up demand and spending come up so with my pent-up demand thesis uh no less than 300 uh no less than 300 um but it could definitely even do more. I still think it can double from here, like with the straight face, just because of how underpriced it is and undervalued right now. And if the equity markets are going to slide, that's the thing that you're going to start peeling money into because you're not going to want to speculate and, and have your money into growth. Uh, and so, I don't know. It's one of those ones where, like, even if the millennials are stealing uh, kind of the, the narrative for the stock market, you may, they may, this is where they may, like, this is like, this is a funny way to say it. This is where you might have to raise your hand and say, I need an adult in the room. Uh, somebody tell me <laughs> what I'm actually supposed to do. And then somebody will say, well, this is like actually how it should work. So, um, yeah, it, it's not really like, there's not really hope uh, given three to five years. And I know, I think it can turn this year is, is, the, is why we bought so early. But given three to five years, I know it will happen. In fact, I will tell you, though, uh, for my part, I've, I haven't been talking about uh, adding to positions, but we've definitely been like if anybody who's messaged me or talked to me knows that we've been kind of averaging down. Here's the thing. From here on out, though, I only would recommend and, and this is do as I say, 
because this is actually what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm actually out of uh, options, uh, not out, I'm not out, I'm still holding what I have, but I'm not adding, when I'm adding right now on dips, I'm adding raw equity, uh, leverage equity, but like, you know, it's on an account that has four times leverage. So, you know, I, I could just keep throwing some on and that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Uh, Rizwan's asking, do we think uh, we'll see AMD in the 80s? Uh, I, I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, I, I think that it'll bottom out maybe around 90, 95, um, and then pop back up. Uh, you know, the chip shortage that we're going through right now is, is it's, it's winding down. Um, the between companies turning to their own chipsets and uh, just the supply chain catching up, um, they won't AMD won't have any issues um, fulfilling demand, and they'll be putting out their next gen stuff. So um, I, I don't see it reaching. Uh, if it does, yeah, if it does eat, it hit eighty again, I'm I'm selling. I don't know. I'm selling everything I own. This is I just saw Lisa on the on the uh, CNBC today too. Um, AMD is literally worth 120, and we've proven that. Um, we called 120, it hit 120 exactly, like 121, 122, right? Like, uh, <laughs> it's one of those ones where, like, you, if you do the due diligence, you do fun. And the great thing about AMD and where it's at right now, and I know we haven't talked about AMD in a while, it's it's kind of a growth value stock if you really think about it, right? Like, it is starting to hit maturation, but it's still growing like a mofo. So it's one of those stocks that like benefits from what's happening right now, even with the well, sell-off in tech. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's growing so well because um, it's powering all of the the next gen consoles. It's powering the consoles. Those that demand mm -hmm. still hasn't been met. Mm -hmm. It's powering uh, new server technology is just eating Intel's lunch. Um, they they put out their newest laptop uh, processors. I mean, AMD is covering the spectrum of of uh, of potential sales and they're they're killing it so yeah yeah and if you want to if you want to bet on talent you know if you're betting on like uh like come on lisa sue geez just just forget mm -hmm. about it guys mm -hmm. guys, guys <laughs> you guys are sleeping on lisa sue and i know you guys are giving her full credit but she is way smarter way better and way more brilliant than you're giving like listen to what she says the thing is is a lot of people you know and this is like like it's hard to like unswath your Asian heritage and Asian culture. So the way she speaks and tells says stuff, like if you got to really unpack what she's saying, uh, and so it's not going to be like overt. It's not going to be in your face. It's not going to be snake oil -y. Uh And you know, that's fine because the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> like look what she's done for the company. Yeah. So. Yeah. Deeds, not words. Yes. Uh, Ford Motor Company, nice solid rally. Uh, we. We chopped off over here, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this floor, if anything, see, this is always the funny thing. If it would have hit 1156 down here, mm -hmm. definitely would have gotten long and gotten a piece of this, but obviously it didn't. Uh, this is a, this is definitely, and, and again, this is why TA is kind of important. So if you, I mean, if we, you know, looked at it and you said like, this is the channel, then yeah, I mean, this, this new floor could have definitely, yeah. I feel bad for not having uh, a read on this uh, tight enough, but I just wasn't, you know, after we got out, uh, wasn't watching it close enough to, to see this bounce coming. But yeah, definitely well deserved bounce for Ford. Um, I sold off like everybody else today, but um, yeah, I mean, up 1% here. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when it comes to product companies like Ford, like Apple, like, uh, you know the, the companies that make things to sell like big expensive items um always just tie tie the stock price to uh their launches so you know with apple tie it to their um their iphone launch for a car company tie it to that whatever the new model is that's coming out you know the reason that ford stock bounced before this was because of the bronco launch was because of the mach e launch um then and, and it's because they launched well um they they were they were received well and uh people bought them now let's say you've uh, if you look back at ford stock and you look in the, the year 2020 you'll see it slumping a lot and that's because there were bad product launches so mm -hmm. um like for for example the explorer launch didn't go very well at all um but point is when when you're looking at a company like an automotive or a tech company that makes things not just software uh it their their stock prices is, is, is going to be contingent on 
uh, how their products launch. So. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's great. Uh, breakdown. I think, I think that is a big piece of it. Um, excuse me. So Rizwan's asking about AVGO. I'm just going to do a technical on it. Uh, of course I can break it down. That's literally what the live stream is for just to see what you all are talking about, thinking about. Uh, so AVGO though, um, if you look at this chart, um, you're looking at pretty close to all time highs, which is amazing. Right. Um, if you're talking about what we're doing in the, uh, regression channel you're on the bottom end of it so decent buy and you're about to it's about to hit all the moving averages so this is a really tight signal right here uh you want to see it bounce hard here you don't want to see it kind of just move into the moving averages and kind of move up that doesn't really count uh but if it hits these moving averages and kind of bounces hard uh that's kind of a signal it is weakening with volume though it looks a little bit because it's at all-time highs, it's not problematic, and because it's held uh, through this kind of sell-off, it's super bullish. Uh, but if you take a look at the DeMarc, uh, you can see that it's showing a bunch of 13. So this is actually a new on the sell count. So here's an interesting thing. On the technicals here, uh, if I'm looking at the way that I look at it, Typically, I would say, you know, it's a 50-50 coin flip, but like if you move to the upside here, you get ready to, to, to just just trounce on new highs. But the problem is the mark is calling all these 13s, it's topping out like crazy, and it's early on the sell count, which means we have a ways to go. And I could see it, you know, if it gets down to 460, being constructive on it, but right now it's got to sell off a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit too hot is what I'd say, so probably not uh what you want to hear but uh yeah i don't know if you're in it probably a good time to sell uh if you're not in it there's no ceiling though and i get it okay so here's my point this was working the last two months like all time highs was working it has changed now like the thing that works right now and this is like and this is why if you've noticed in like the signals account and all this other stuff if you're in the in, in the chat Sometimes we get re really silent on the trades because the thing that we were doing wasn't working. It just doesn't, if it doesn't work anymore, stop using it and you got to figure out what's going to work. Right now we're going back into volatility. And so because of that, all time high plays are a little bit less uh, premium. There's a time where you want to play all time highs. And that was uh, the last couple months. I think that has definitely changed now. Now you want to start thinking about dip buying, but dip buying the right, uh, the right. Uh... Yeah, exactly. Uh, Richard's like all-time highs start shorting Asan. Obviously, it was one of them, right? So, um, yeah. Do you know who this company is, uh, Marcus Broadcom? Broadcom? Yeah, yeah. Um, heard of them? Um, no, not not really. Uh, yeah. Okay. Seems like it's down your alley. Um, all right. Uh, here's a stock that uh, me and Colby mentioned a while back, and it uh, since then has just did the up thing. So congratulations, Colby, on making a lot of money on this. But <laughs> uh, at 142 was the kind of the top of the range for us, uh, and it was really critical for it to pass through. But you can see it did not. It decided that 142 was it. Like uh, sprinted to the end, hit 142, and uh, it's appealing right now. Uh, so what is my point? Uh, my point is uh, probably, and I know this is like. Look, I love Unity, and uh, it's a part of our like kind of long-term investment portfolio. But it might be a decent—it's it, overpriced right now. Uh, so, if we get a nice little bounce to the mean reversion line, that's that's indeed probably when I I might pick up. Uh, yeah, I mean, percentage. just l look at the volumes; they're they're dying off. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, it's yeah. running. It's yeah, no, exactly. Like in the, this this candle, exactly. It was like the sprint to the finish line, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And that was it. That and now it's toppling over. Yep. So yep. make make your money now. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it. And oh wow, well, perfect time. Oh, look at that. Shit, look at that. We got a minute. 1229. We got one minute. Um, oh, one minute. Yeah. Uh Rizwan's asking about Nike. Nike? Oh, mm -hmm. wait, and I gotta show my yeah, let's let's look at Nike real quick. Dude, I haven't even thought of Nike in forever. Like I feel kind of bad oh, saying that because I, I loved them when I was little, but I haven't uh I haven't even like looked at what shoes they've got coming out clothes or anything let me see let me see what we got with nike here trading view nike i love these one you know they like what you know you're like a, a baddie when you have a one one ticker symbol yeah one, one letter like yeah. uh, nike 
exactly. Uh, <laughs> where'd this go? Uh, oh, I think Nike is NKE. I don't know what N is. Why did I think Nike was N? I don't know. I don't know. What is N? Mm. Yeah, I remember this gap up. Uh, what, what's the question? What was he asking? 134? Um... <laughs> nah. No, man, look at nah, that. What is that? <laughs> nah. Nah, there's, strong, there's, there's a strong floor here, man. <laughs> Plus, you're hitting the 200 moving day. There's two things. There's a couple things, and this is what they call confluence. So confluence meaning, like, there's, there's 145 plus there's here like right there's there's a decent amount of previous support and then the 200 day moving average is is right there and 200 day is typically pretty strong for a blue chip company like nike yeah it's Dude, pretty look at strong, that volume in, in july Dude, like sell wild Wait, hold man. on 11 downside it's almost close to a blue chip loop <laughs> oh Damn. man Nike, dang, wow, Nike took a hit. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. They really did. I mean, I know they did, but, you know. Hmm. <laughs> Luke finally made it. Hey, what's up, Luke? Hey, Luke. He's saying uh, we, got some, uh, we got some likes on here. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we made it, Marcus. So, oh, yeah, wow. take us out, man. Okay, up, brother? cool. Yeah, um, we've, uh, we're almost out of hoodies, honestly. Um, if you want a hoodie, please order them uh, soon because we only we only have one large left, and uh, one small, <laughs> two mediums. I'm counting them right now. <laughs> uh, but we, yeah. well, his point is like he's trying to get me to reorder them, but we're yeah. not gonna until we run out. It's yeah, I'm trying to send two signals at once. Hey, yeah, order some yeah. more and please buy some more. Uh, uh, we we've also got some stickers. Um, mm. Head on over to our website, RedcliffResearch.com. Uh, check out the merch section pick them up and uh yeah if, if you like what you see and you're not already a patreon uh, head on over to patreon and um yeah find us there and we, we got the links in the description below so uh yeah what's up kenny uh uh bem's asking green or red day tomorrow what do you think marcus green 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 yeah i think so too green and then whip saw back to red yeah. so if we get a nice green day like even a half recovery candle especially on the s p i'm talking s p flipping fucking short yeah <laughs> flipping short i think this is the start boys yeah. get ready yep. oil's good though everybody relax <laughs> oil's good everybody else uh get ready hope you got your so, running yeah. shoes on because uh, it's gonna <laughs> run <laughs> yeah hey All thanks right. everybody well thank you so much for your time everyone i uh, really appreciate your you being here with us and uh yeah Looking forward to next week. See you on Slack. Bye, guys. Take care, buddy. Bye.